it looks like we've lost Annie, which is awfully interesting. And it looks like the meeting is live. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Audit and Finance Standing Committee meeting for December 15th, 2021. Uh, it's uh, just after 10 a.m. I'm Paul Russell. And as is standard with these meetings, uh, I would like to run through a normal audio-visual check uh, just to make sure that everybody is connected. Uh, I'll try again. Good morning, everyone. I'm going to uh, call this meeting to order. This is the Audit and Finance Standing Committee meeting for December 15th, 2021. As a standard with the audio video or audio visual uh, format of these meetings, we are going to run through the list of councillors to make sure that everybody's AV is okay. Uh, so starting with District 1, Councillor Daigle Gammon, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Good morning. And Councillor Hensby, District 2. Ho, 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 I'm here. There we go. Good morning. And Councillor Purdy, District 4. Good, good morning. Good morning. Uh, Councillor Cleary, District 9. Hello, hello. Can you guys hear me? We can hear you just fine. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Morse, District 10. Good morning, everyone. Joining you from City Hall today. Oh, good stuff. Me too. And may <laughs> We have three joining from City Hall. That's awesome. And Mayor Savage. Good morning, folks. Good morning. Uh, the uh, first item on the agenda, the next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes of November 17th, 2021. Mr. Chairman, may I ask for a correction, please? Uh, once the motion is on the floor, would you like to uh, move I'll forward? Move, I'll move the I'm with the minutes of November 17th, but I need to correct that I was present for the meeting. You have me present as well as under regrets. So I don't think I have a split personality to be a, be there or not there, because I, I was there for the meeting. I remember the presentation of uh, the Herring Cove, uh, Mr. Steve Murphy and stuff. So I was present for the meeting. Wonderful. I'll Thank second you. that, and I know that uh, Councillor Hensby was both there and not there. Thank you. I, I appreciate that confirmation, Councillor Cleary. Um, are there any other errors or omissions? And to the clerk's office, we've made note of, uh, of those, of that error. And uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, yes, sir. Another, another point, should we be showing in the minutes where the meeting was held? Because now we're being going back and forth between in-person meetings and online. Uh, so I thought we should probably have the minutes, uh, uh at Halifax Chamber, at City Hall with Chambers, whatever, just to make a notation there on, on the top of the minutes. I don't know if it's the list later on, uh, but just, uh, just I'm look to this is me to call the order and stuff. It doesn't say where the meeting was held. Uh, that's true. The meetings are the meeting minutes are posted online alongside of the agenda, which indicates that the me where the meeting was held. So I'm just wondering if uh john or annie have an opinion on including that within the minutes thank you chair um through you to the councillor yes the, the chair <clears throat> is correct that the the agendas always do state where the the meeting is taking place so those two documents um in tandem serve as the um as the living record for the meeting um but this is potentially something that we can revisit i can take back to the municipal clerk um but um for sure the uh the attendance of councillor hensby will be uh rectified in, in the draft minutes great thank you very much are there any other errors or omissions with these minutes? Not seeing any. All those in favor of the amended minutes of uh, November 17th, please indicate by uh, saying aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Great, thank you. The approval of the order of business and approval of additions and deletions over to Annie. Thank you, Chair. Um, there is one addition for this meeting, item 15.1, uh, um, that received a two-thirds majority consent prior to the meeting, uh, and there was no additional um, request for other additions or deletions. Okay. Thank you very much. And uh, just to mention, item 15.1 is the entry increase to contract RFQ 21-002 uh, to 20. Uh, we'll get to it. Um, can I have a motion to approve the uh, order of business and approval of additions and deletions? Uh, thank you, Councillor Cleary. I see uh, John, go ahead. 
Can I ask, Chair, if perhaps we could move that uh, added item up before we go in camera, just in terms of the uh, order of business? Absolutely. Uh, have Andrew here, and then we can let him go. Yep, certainly. Sounds good. Okay, uh, so we have Councillor Cleary having moved the order of business. Do we have a seconder? Ah, second. we have. Thank you, Councillor Dago Gammon, and go ahead, Annie. Thank you, Chair. I, I just wanted um, to clarify that perhaps a, a councillor or, or a member of the committee, if um, if someone uh, would be, feel comfortable requesting the the move on the order uh, of business, that would be a move. Where I'm happy to do that. Thank you very much, Councillor Cleary. Thank you, Councillor Cleary. Thank you, Councillor Daigle Gammon. Uh, from members of committee, do we have any other changes to this, uh, to the order of business? Super. Uh, all in favor of the amended order of business, please signify aye. by saying aye. 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 All opposed, aye. Aye. Great, thank you. Um, Next items on the agenda are business arising out of the minutes and there are none. Annie, your hand is still up. I'm not sure if that is, uh, oh, okay, good. Uh, call for declaration of call of conflicts of interest. Not seeing any. Um, next items are motions of reconsideration, motions of rescission, consideration of deferred matters and notices of table matters, all of which are none. Uh, correspondence over to the clerk. Thank you, Chair. There is no correspondence received for this meeting. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have petitions. Do we have petitions? Thank you, Chair. The clerk's office did not receive notification of any petitions. Okay, thank you. And we don't have any presentations or information items brought forward or Auditor General's report. The next item on the agenda is 12.2.1, the proposed 2022 meeting schedule. Um, can we have um, someone to make the motion to approve the meeting schedule for 2022? So moved. Second it. Thank you. Chairman, the only point I want to make on the, on the significant dates on our first so if we also include Emancipation Day, uh, make sure we record it, acknowledge that it is also that same day, August the 1st. I think that can be uh, taken into consideration by the clerk. The dates for um, the dates that are included here are for reference for rescheduling. So that, that would, uh, are these dates that we would normally just not meet or? That's correct. The dates we don't meet, the holiday events and stuff, but I thought we were acknowledging the vacation days part are, are Knowledge for special days in this ballot. Just because day to day falls on the same day, it's not listed as a, as a, as the date itself. But I just want to have it included in the um, as a go forward. We will take that under consideration. Thank you very much, Councillor Hensby, for that. Are there any comments on the schedule? Not seeing any. All those in favor of the. Proposed 2022 meeting schedule, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Great, thank you very much. Uh, the next items are the grants committee. There is nothing from their committee members. There's nothing from their motions. There is nothing from there. Um, we are on to item 15.1. This is the increase to contractor of Q21-002. Uh, two 2021 model refuse transfer trailers, etc. We have an optional presentation on this report, uh, and we have Andrew with us. So I'm wondering if uh, folks would like the presentation on this report. I certainly would. I would. Okay, Andrew, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen. Hit that. And we're going to hit this. Just let me know if you can see that. We can. Excellent. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Chair and committee members. Andrew Palopoulos, Director of Solid Waste Resources here. 
uh, to present to you today on the staff report in front of you, which uh, in a nutshell uh, is a request for additional funds uh, to purchase uh, a couple of trailers that we need in support of our rural refuse depot operations. So a little bit of um, background, uh, HRM owns and operates two rural refuse depots. One is located in Sheep Harbor, one is located in Middle Muskegon. The primary purpose of these depots is to allow for uh, residential uh, collection vehicles to tip their loads because of the uh, distance to Otter Lake. So uh, curbside collection vehicles collect from these areas, they bring it back to the depots, they tip their loads into these larger trailers. Those trailers consolidate the loads and allow for effective and efficient uh, transportation of garbage to Otter Lake. Additionally, uh, the depots are also open uh, to members of the local community. We, um, as part of this operation, we own six trailers. These are compaction trailers. There's a picture there in the bottom right-hand corner of one. Um, we uh, replace them roughly every 10 years. Once we start hitting 10 years with this equipment, they start becoming unreliable. The cost of maintenance starts uh, being more dramatic and ultimately uh, we're put at risk of uh, service disruption if we, uh, if we lose a trailer and it's not operable. So as part of um, the capital budget cycle for 21-22, uh, we were planning on purchasing two new trailers that were both uh, at that 10 year mark. So we issued uh, an RFQ, which was publicly tendered between March and April, 2021. We received two bids. Uh, we awarded uh, the contract to Spectre Manufacturing. Uh, Spectre was going to provide the two trailers. Uh, they've been the long-term supplier for us uh, with respect to these compaction trailers. So we have a very good relationship with them. The second bidder was more than twice the cost. Ultimately, what ended up happening upon issuing the contract, Spectre came back to us and could not honor their price uh, per the RFQ. And we're looking for an additional 34,000 US per trailer. Ultimately, we have two options. One, we can go back out to public tender. Given the results of the RFQ and given uh, the second bid was more than twice the cost of uh, the, the low bid, uh, we don't necessarily think there's any financial benefit in doing so. And so we are here today before you with a recommendation um, that we, uh, we accept the, uh, the terms from the provider, so paying an additional $34,000 US per trailer. And our recommendation to you is to approve uh, an additional roughly 66,000 to be added to the capital count for the rural refuse depots to fund that um, those monies from the solid waste reserve Q556 and ultimately to approve uh, an additional $92,000 uh, to the contract with Spectre. So what that does effectively, it raises the price of the contract from just a little bit over $300,000 to just a little bit over $400,000 for the two trailers in total. And that, it brings me to the end of the presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Andrew. Um, if anyone has any questions, please indicate that in the chat. Um, and thank you, I, I see Councillor Cleary there uh, with his hand up and uh, would you be interested in uh, putting the motion on the floor, Councillor Cleary? Thank you, Mr. Chair, be happy to put the motion on the floor. Just bring up my agenda here. Um, actually, because this was an added item, I don't have it in front I can of me. post, I can. Uh, oh, there it is. Uh, I'll move that the Halifax or the Audit and Finance Standing Committee recommend that Halifax Regional Council one approve a budget increase to the 2021-22 approved gross capital budget to increase project account number CW2000003 
world depots in the amount of 66,887 net HST included, and to approve the unbudgeted reserve withdrawal of 66,887 net HST included from Q556 Solid Waste Facilities Reserve to fund this increase, and three, approve an increase of $92,211 net HST included to the contract with Spectre Manufacturing Inc. PO. 2070860000074, an increase in the raw material surcharge with funding from CW2000003 Rural Depots as outlined in the financial application section of this report. Thank you. Do we have a seconder? Second. Thank you, Councillor Morse. Go ahead, Councillor Cleary. Um, I'm not surprised uh, by this, but I, my question to Andrew would be, do you think this is temporary? Is this a, is a, a supply chain issue, a logistical issue, or is this something that we'll see on these and other kinds of equipment uh, sustained now going forward? Thank you through the chair to the councillor. Great, great question, councillor. And I, I think during my slides, I didn't allude to why uh, they were looking for a $34,000 US increase. Uh, so what they communicated to us that it was re uh, related to supply chain and uh, dramatic increases in raw material costs. Um, I think we're seeing this across the board. To be, on, to be honest, uh, we do have a couple of tenders in solid waste. I'm sure you're seeing others um, with respect to public awards as well. So I, I do think this this is happening now and we're going to continue seeing um, increases in contracting costs. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cleary. Uh, Councillor Dago gammon Thank you. Um, will the, Andrew, will the increase uh, in this contract how close would it have been to the second bidder? I mean, is, is it close? Would it come under the second bidder? I'm just wondering about uh, well, that if the second bidder was like double the cost, were they maybe a little bit more proactive in their uh, costing and understanding what the, the issues might be? Thank you through the chair to the councillor. Hard to say, councillor. What I can say is the original bid price was around, you know, 300,000. Uh, the second bid uh, was more than twice that amount. Mm -hmm. And where we're, where we're gonna land is a little bit over 400,000. And then additionally, we have this long-term relationship. We've been supplied uh, trailers from this vendor before. Actually, I think most of the trailers are from this vendor currently in our fleet. Um, and, and we've had good service. So that's what I do know. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Daigle Gammon. Councillor Hensby. Thank you, sir. Uh, first of all, I'm kind of curious why the report, the report, the CAO report is seven months ago. It was given back in May. And now for this to get to council, it's going to be January. It's going to be eight months of this being in, in, in the mix. i uh, just kind of curious why it took so long for us to get this far to get to us. And second of all, the longevity of these trailers and stuff, um, Andrew knows quite well, I'm, I'm very persistent about our rural depots and we need to have more availability for C&D materials. We have illegal dumping, we need to provide an alternative uh, supply or depot uh, arrangements. And I'm hoping that these replacement trailers can be still utilized for a period of time, perhaps as a demonstration project. You know, I, if we're going to replace them, take them out, what happens to them? They become scrap metal or they go up for surplus? Like, are they still functional? Uh, can it have some clarification on those things, please? Thank you through the chair to uh, the councillor. Um, so councillor, uh, we did award in May. Uh, I would say to you that um, there was a back and forth that was quite extensive. It is not normal um, business that once you award a contract, uh, you go back and you consider price increases. So there was quite a bit of back and forth with the vendor, quite a few discussions between procurement and legal in terms of what our options uh, were. Uh, and we certainly pushed back on the vendor uh, initially, uh, I would say, and then additionally, uh, quite honestly, we, we had to prepare this report and, and get it in the queue uh, to be here day, today before you. So that's with respect to the time. Um, just uh, these trailers um, are there for refuse only. Uh, this is what we put in it. Um, we do not accept uh, construction and demolition debris at um, 
The rural refuse depots, our policy at Otter Lake is that we do not accept construction and demolition debris. This is related to L200. It's our bylaw, which mandates a 75% diversion of C&D materials. So that's been a long-term uh, policy. That being said, I do I know we've had quite a bit of discussions about C&D, and I, I do recognize in particular in Sheet Harbour, uh, the accessibility to those private C&D facilities is, is a long commute. So certainly happy to carry on those conversations, Councillor, um, with you on that. I know we provided you some info, but, but again, um, happy to continue that dialogue with you. Uh, just the last piece on what ends up happening uh, with the trailers at end of life. I'm actually not Sure, and I, I got Barry Nickerson here, who is a solid waste uh, engineer with our uh, division. So I'm just going to ask Barry if uh, to come forward and just uh, see if he knows um, how they're managed at the uh, end of life. Barry, we see you online. Oh. Yep, there we go. Um, the trailers are actually sent to uh, salvage once they are done with our purpose. Uh, we typically send them to the through the fleet services and they are typically auctioned off. Uh, just for example, one of the trailers that is being repa replaced right now is actually never made it through its provincial uh, mo motor vehicle inspection. So basically it is unusable as a further trailer. Uh, please clarify, it has never made it through its MVI? No, the, the current year it did not make it through. It, it would be current more year. expensive okay. to repair it than it would be to replace the trailer essentially. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Hensby, so, uh, does that? So out of curiosity then, how does it get transported when the trailer gets uh, located? Does it have to be put on a flatbed to be moved or can it be moved to its final resting point if it doesn't have a MVI on it? It is usually towed by a tow truck. All right. Still, I think we need a rural solution for our CND and solid waste and uh, illegal dumping problems. And uh, I thought the surplus trails could have been an option for us to look at. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, instead of delivering to Otter Lake, it would be delivered to the CND facilities on Ross Road or up at uh, Goodwood or over to uh, Goffs itself. So I think we need to find a creative solution still. Thank you for that. Input, uh, Councillor Hensby, uh, Councillor Morse. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just, we're seeing a, a lot more of these uh, contracts come back and, uh, you know, they're running over and that kind of thing. Um, do we have any options to push back or to reopen contracts? I, I'm just wondering how expensive this is gonna get if we're constantly told of supply chain issues and that sort of thing for, for multiple projects. Andrew or Jerry? Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I can kind of take this one. Um, uh, just first, uh, just a point on <clears throat> the uh, salvage of, of trailers. We do have a um, surplus assets policy that all surplus assets fall under. So it's pretty, pretty robust policy there. Um, secondly, uh, <clears throat> to Councillor Morse's question, yeah, we are we are seeing uh, increases to contract, and a lot of it is around issues related to COVID and supply chain issues, uh, inflation. Um, you know, we've uh, certainly brought that forward in our in our fiscal framework. I think one of the things we flagged is uh, we're seeing parts uh, for like in fleet and and transit. Uh, you know, up. Uh, 10 to 20 percent uh but yeah there there is a uh definitely um a risk around inflation around our contracts uh the thing in terms of pushing back um we we go through a public procurement competitive process so um you know these were publicly tendered um you know sent out for uh um you know advertised on the province's website so uh, there is a competitive process and, and, you know, we're coming forward with the, with the lowest uh, bid option uh, on those. 
Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Just if one more comment. It just seems like everybody can use this supply chain issue <laughs> to their advantage and, and we don't seem to have a lot of uh, options in this situation. Thank you. Thank you very much for that uh, very relevant um, observation, uh, Councillor Morse. I think you're absolutely right. Are there any other, we have an additional question. Uh, go ahead, Councillor Hensby. Just curious now we're into eight months later, will this price hold or will it be another negotiation? Uh, Andrew. Uh, through the chair to the councillor, uh, this price will hold councillor, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Dago Gammon. Thank you. Um, I guess I'm just wondering um, what we'll we be looking in terms of when we look at procurement. Are we going to start looking to build in a contingency for contract increases? I know one of the things that happens is when the public looks at this and they keep saying increase a contract, increase a contract, increase a contract. So um, I'm just wondering if there's a way that, that we might look to build in a bit of a contingency for inflation or for the supply chain issues that are experiencing. Sure. Yeah, well, I guess, yeah, thank you, Councillor. Uh, I mean, one of the things that we look at in the competitive bid is, is, is uh, certainly we would do uh, research around, you know, what we're seeing uh, from the market. Um, <clears throat> A lot of uh, things that we purchase from a capital po point of view have a uh, a capital project associated uh, with with the um, with funding, and you know a lot of times you know in most cases uh, best practice and, and you see this quite a bit in uh, in in the council uh, reports that we do have a we do build in a contingency. However, we're finding that you know the the what we're getting back is 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 much more. Um, again, we're we're aware of that, and and certainly trying to uh, find uh, make sure you know when we're coming forward with with our capital budgets that our estimates are are including the the right amount of money. But it, it definitely is a pressure, and it uh, it has been uh, certainly flagged uh, you know in our fiscal framework report. Uh, in in terms of building this year's budget, that that we're we're seeing that, and there has has been many um, you know reports that have come back looking for additional additional funding because of inflationary pressures. So uh, we'll continue to to try to bid competitively, um, uh, or tender competitively. Sorry, and and certainly look uh, you know uh, in our budgeting to get the best best estimates that we can. Thank you. I don't know if there's anything you want to add in there, Andrew, from, from your experience and your, your projects. Uh, th thank you. I, I think what I would just add, like even for this tender, like our budget actually was based on the last time we um, we tendered this. It was actually awarded to, and we did add inflation to it. So uh, I, I think it is, um, you know, uh, it, conditions in general have changed dramatically. So um, I would just echo Jerry's comments. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Andrew and Jerry. I don't see any further speakers on this. Um, so all those in favor of this uh, increase in contract, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Great. Thank you very much. Um, continuing in that vein, do should we do notices of motion and public participation? So does anybody have any notices of motion? I don't see any. There is nobody here for public participation. Um, nobody has signed up for that. So the next items on the agenda are in camera. Can I have a motion to go in camera, please? So moved. Thank you, Councillor Cleary, seconder. Second. Seconded by Councillor Morse. Thank you. All those in favor of going in camera? Aye. 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 All opposed? Great. Thank you. Let's go in camera.
Just as a reminder to all counselors moving in camera to please uh, leave this meeting uh, to join the Microsoft Teams meeting, and then we will come back here for ratification. Thank you. Thank you, Annie.
I think we have everybody back into the in public session. Just as a reminder, we are still live. Uh, thank you for taking down the um, the away sign, Simon. Uh, so we have had a fulsome discussion about uh, two items in camera, and would look to uh, have the mover and the seconder of those items. I'm going to paste the motions in the chat. So can we have, uh, Councillor Hensby, would you be interested in moving item 14.1.1? Uh, certainly, sir. I move that uh, the audit in stand committee, uh, one, adopt recommendation as outlined in the private and confidential staff report dated November 23rd. One and two to direct the staff report dated November 23rd, 2021, be maintained as private and confidential. Thank you. Do we have a seconder for that? Councillor Purdy. Okay. Thank you. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. Great. Thank you. The next motion is 14.1.2. And I have pasted that in the chat as well. Councillor Daigle Gammon. Great. Um, I moved that the Audit and Finance Standing Committee, whoops, just lost it, um, adopt the recommendations as outlined in the private and confidential staff report dated December 2nd, 2021, as amended by the in camera discussion of the committee, and two, direct the staff report dated December 2nd, 2021 be maintained as private and confidential, I so move. Thank you, do we have a seconder? Councillor Purdy. All in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Aye, aye. all opposed say nay. Great, thank you. We dealt with uh, notices of motion and public participation earlier. Uh, now that we have passed the schedule for 2022, the date of the next meeting is January 19th, 2022. And can I have a motion to adjourn, please? So moved. Thank you, Councillor Cleary. We stand adjourned. Have a great day, everybody. <laughs>